The Guardians of the Galaxy have always been a pretty obscure team in the Marvel comics, until the breakout success of their first movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and since then, they have become a worldwide phenomenon. However, none of their characters are more merchandisable than the walking tree man himself, Groot. Despite being a tree of very few words, Groot actually has a pretty long and complex history in the Marvel comics, so today I want to present all of his history in a comprehensive but still easy to understand format for both new readers and comic book veterans. But before we get too far into things, let's talk about charity. This video is a part of Team Trees, and I'm sure you've heard all about it, but the long and short of it is that this group is being led by the mega YouTube star Mr. Beast and the Arbor Day Foundation to plant 20 million trees. For every dollar you donate, they'll plant a tree. One dollar, one tree. Easy math. I've already thrown in some money, and I would love to urge you to do the same by following the link in the description. Do it for Earth, do it for Groot. Groot made his first appearance in Tales to Astonish number 13 in 1960, and he was created by Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, and Larry Lieber. However, that Groot has since been established as a totally separate character from the gentle giant that we know today. The modern version of Groot is a reimagining of that classic character by Keith Giffen and Timothy Green II for Annihilation Conquest Star-Lord number 1 in 2007. But let's hop into his comic history. Groot is a Flora Colossus from Planet X, and while he might be tall by human standards, he's actually pretty puny for his race. Groot was an outcast among his fellow saplings, but he got along quite well with the planet's maintenance mammals who served the Flora Colossi. While most of the other colossi treated the mammals as lesser beings, Groot did what he could to stand up for them, and this love of animals would never fade, carrying well into his adult life. The Flora Colossi are a scary race, and are known to kidnap other species for experimentation. This made Groot very uncomfortable, and he was exiled for saving the life of a human girl that was taken prisoner. Without a home, Groot traveled the galaxy, but for some reason, he pretended to be the monarch of Planet X. Now, if you've seen the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, then you know that Groot can only repeat one phrase over and over again. I'm Groot. So, how could he lie to people and claim that he's royalty, or even anything at all? Well, the answer is a little bit complicated, so let me break it down. When he was first introduced, Groot could actually talk in complete sentences, but it devolved into the I am Groot that we know today around issue 8 of Guardians of the Galaxy in 2009. This change in speech pattern was never addressed in continuity, and I guess we're just supposed to pretend like Groot was always talking like this. As for why Groot's speech sounds this way, the in-universe explanation is that Groot's vocal cords are stiff and inflexible. So you see, while all that most people hear is I am Groot, he's actually speaking a complex complex language. In fact, Groot is a pretty eloquent dude, with it being visualized during this time that a young Jean Grey had a telepathic conversation with him. It's worth noting that we do get the occasional deviation, like you are Groot or yo soy Groot. While it's cute, it doesn't jive with the in-universe explanation of Groot's language that we discussed earlier. But hey, these are one-off inconsequential bits, so I guess they're really not worth getting mad about. Anyway, back to the history. While in exile, Groot got himself into a bit of trouble, which landed him in prison. It's here that he became roommates with the infamous Rocket Raccoon. Despite Groot's friendly demeanor, the two were not friends at first, which was made more difficult due to the fact that Rocket couldn't even understand Groot's speech. Although he was a model prisoner, the guards constantly injured Groot, hitting him over and over again and laughing about how he could only repeat, I am Groot. Although Rocket stood up for his new roommate, he was still reluctant to become friends. Later that night, though, some of the guards cut the power to avoid being recorded while they got their revenge on Rocket and Groot. In response, the duo put up one hell of a fight, during which Rocket discovered that he could actually understand his partner. For some reason, though, they decided to stay in prison. They did eventually break out of jail, but they landed in another one almost instantly after. This time, however, Rocket and Groot were drafted by the Kree Empire to be a part of a special ops group against an invading techno-organic species called the Phalanx. Led by a man named Peter Quill, aka Star-Lord, this task force was technology-free, and as such, they were invisible to the Phalanx. 
Star-Lord's team was invaluable in fighting off the invasion, and afterwards, he took many of those members to form a brand new team that would defend the galaxy from large threats, the Guardians of the Galaxy. This group was an independent organization, but Groot was able to use his fake status as royalty to get them a seat on the Galactic Council, which is basically the United Nations in space. As the inside man, Groot helped get the Guardians a more official foothold, which sort of legitimized the team. Outside of that, Groot really wasn't a major player in a lot of Guardian stories. He was mostly just there to be the team's muscle and to be comedic relief with his I am Grootisms. That being said, Groot is definitely the most consistent member of the Guardians of the Galaxy, and when it was later revealed that Star-Lord had his fellow Guardian Mantis psychically manipulate the other members into joining up in the first place, there was major dissent within the ranks, with almost half of the team leaving. Since Rocket was one of the few Guardians to stick around, this of course meant that Groot was right there with him. The Guardians officially disbanded at the end of the Thanos Imperative crossover event when Star-Lord was seemingly killed off, so Groot used this as an opportunity to return to Planet X. Upon returning to his home planet, Groot was immediately arrested and tried for impersonating the King, also not to mention that he was already exiled. As for his punishment, Groot was to be chained up and pegged at by robotic birds for a turn kind of like a tree Prometheus. Thankfully, Rocket was able to save Groot and get him a full pardon for his crimes when the two of them helped save Planet X from being destroyed by killer clowns. Because comics. Yeah, the time between the Guardians disbanding and inevitably reforming was super weird for Rocket and Groot, but thankfully this only lasted for a couple of quick miniseries before Star-Lord came back from the Not Really Dead and reformed the Guardians off-panel. The reformation of the Guardians of the Galaxy was super rushed because the movie was right around the corner and Marvel wanted to relaunch the book so that the team would be relevant in the comics again. But even though Groot was a prime candidate for merchandising, he still really didn't do much in the relaunch and was still most acting as a background character outside of participating in a few fights and being comic relief with his I am Grootisms. Again. But there was that one time when Groot was temporarily the host of his fellow guardian, Agent Venom, symbiote, meaning that yes, Groot was once Venom, and I think that's pretty neat. On occasion, Rocket and Groot would break away from the rest of the team to have their own adventures, like the time that Groot gave Rocket a treasure map for his birthday, which ultimately led to a party. It's a cute gesture, but Rocket was not a fan of there not being a monetary reward for the struggle that the treasure map put him through. And while this might seem like a cute one-off story, it actually had repercussions into another book, where Rocket went missing, but somehow managed to carve a map into Groot before vanishing in the form of a Jared Leto Joker parody. The only problem is that Groot's body grows back super quick, which means that in order to keep the information fresh, he had to carve into himself over and over again. This wild goose chase went on for months, and it turns out that in the meantime, Rocket had actually been impersonating a dictator and took over his empire. Oh, and at the end of it, Rocket chained up and tortured Groot. So why all the torment? It's literally just because Rocket wanted to get back at Groot for the aforementioned birthday treasure hunt. Let me reiterate that. Groot spent months looking for his best friend who he thought was lost and maybe dead, with the only lead being a map that he had to continue continuously carve into himself over and over again just because he threw a birthday adventure for said best friend. I have no idea how they made peace after that, but they somehow did and are continuing to travel with the Guardians of the Galaxy. Groot got a more prominent role during the Black Vortex event when he submitted to a powerful relic called, well, the Black Vortex. As a result, Groot obtained breathtaking cosmic power, but could still only say, I am Groot. Now, you'd think this power would end up making Groot a more major character, but not really. I mean, some other characters also got powered up, and they really outshined the Tree Man. In the end, it really didn't matter much, because Groot relinquished this power back to the Vortex, but it did permanently change his appearance, with him now sporting a star-shaped emblem on his chest, along with these vine-like muscles and hair. This design would stick around for a pretty decent while, but when Rocket and Groot were hitting up a black market trading outpost, they were attacked by the Gardener. Don't let the lame name deceive you. This dude is one of the elders of the universe, and he is a really powerful opponent. Well, the gardener went a bit off the deep end after being poisoned by Loki, and he absolutely destroyed Groot, who had just gotten rocket.
Rocket to safety. Now, Groot has been able to grow back from a splinter several times before, so Rocket planted one in his paw ASAP. But this time, Groot was only able to grow back to the size of a sapling. You see, the gardener had taken Groot's remains and planted them in his garden. As a result, he was able to sap Groot's energy and combine it with his own power to grow an army of grotesque Groot-like creatures. But we all know that the real reason for stunting Groot's growth was because he was a baby in the then-recently released Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, and the comics desperately wanted to try to emulate it in hopes of capturing some of those trickle-down sales. Anyway, after the Guardians were able to kill off some of those tree creatures, Groot gained back some of his lost energy and grew bigger. But here is where one of my favorite aspects of this character comes into play. While the Guardians mowed down the Gardener's minions, the kind-hearted Groot used his healing powers to filter out some of the toxins that were clouding the Gardener's mind. As a thank you, the Gardener healed and upgraded Groot, and now he can talk in complete sentences. Again. After a brief appearance in the Infinity Wars event where Gamora became a villain and killed Thanos, we cut to Star-Lord and Groot by themselves without a team. It turns out that Rocket discovered that he was dying and left without saying a word since he didn't want his friends to see him in this, what he says to be, pathetic state. But this sent the newly regrown Groot into an angsty teenage phase, complete with a Liberty Spike mohawk. Despite being able to talk now, Groot still wasn't much of a major player in the comics, since Marvel seemed to be a lot more interested in playing with the new roster of Guardians, like Beta Ray Bill, Moondragon, and Martyr. The only real plot point that Groot got was when he and the rest of the Guardians wanted to protect Gamora, but Star-Lord wanted nothing to do with her after Infinity Wars, since she kind of killed him then. It's a long story. We'll talk about it in a different video. Anyway, since Groot and the other Guardians wanted to protect Gamora, Groot led a mutiny and overthrew Quill's leadership, but that barely lasted. At the time of this recording, Rocket has sort of rejoined the team, but he's unable to live outside of his life support machine slash mech suit. But the overarching plot really hasn't given us much time to see how his return affects both him and Groot's relationship, or really anything about Groot at all. I'm hoping that we'll get to see more later on down the line. Groot, and frankly the Guardians of the Galaxy as a whole, are a really good example of how sometimes comic book characters need a little bit more time, and frankly outside media, to steer them in a better direction. And honestly, I really do think that the Groot that we have today is a very good character and definitely deserves his place as a Marvel Comics great. But if you like this video, then why not consider subscribing, or even watching another one? And if you enjoyed this deep dive into Groot's history, then I've got some pretty good news for you, because I have a dedicated playlist for all of my Guardians of the Galaxy videos, so if you liked this, then chances are you're probably going to like that as well. But anyway, I hope you learned at least a little something new, and hopefully I'll see you next time.